I'm delighted to be joined by BT Group's Fotis Coronis. Fotis, welcome. Hi, Justin. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So BT and EE yep. have undergone quite some change in the last year or two. Um, tell us a little bit about how the whole integration is going, Fotis. Yeah, it's going very, very well, very fast, actually. So I was, we were involved in the pre-integration phases also in the discussions, and then I... Uh, I joined uh, BT 1st of February, actually, and uh, changed my location at the same day. And it's great because B I have a very big assignment in BT. I've, I have, I'm, I'm running the mobile network as well, mm -hmm. but I also acquired all the IT uh, of BT Group. So I'm now MD of IT and mobile. So that's an uh, you know, incredible scope. But it does make sense because, uh, you know, in a software-enabled world, mm -hmm. we need to join forces between the different elements. Uh, networks are becoming much more software enabled, you know, so it's really good. It's very, very exciting and, uh, you know, fantastic opportunities ahead. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a bit of an insight into what BT and EE are doing as, as the network evolves to this fifth generation of technology? Uh, it is important to say that, you know, the, um, in order to become a 5G, uh, um, you know, operator and provide all these super services above that, we, we need to make sure that the foundation is really good, you know because it's actually complementary. 5G is not a replacement of 4G technology, but it actually sits on uh, a 4G uh, infrastructure and a 4G capability. So we are absolutely committed and motivated, and we are continuing our 4G rollout in all the different uh, parts of it. We pr need to provide 100% you know, coverage for the whole of the UK. We have committed to that as far as the perception is concerned, but also the geography by you know, 2020 to cover 95% real geography and about 100% perception, I would say and uh, to you know, have incredible speeds, sustainable quality, um, you know, uh, extra reliability. We know how much the reliability factor is very important. And then on top of that, you know, to create these um, opportunities around 5G, bringing these proof of concepts as earlier on so that we could uh, you know, explore the opportunity uh, around 5G and what we can do over it. But when do you think we might start seeing commercial 5G? Um, I think that uh, there will be things that we will see as pre-5G, uh, you know, testing a, a lot of these concepts uh, in, in uh, over our 4G network, but in a smaller scale. I think that's important so that we can un understand the added value that it brings to the mm -hmm. UK society and to the industry, because 5G has a very big role to play in verticals, um, like, you know, automobile, in, you know, uh, sort of safety and security, um, you know, smart cities. And we see that coming in, I would say, as proof of concepts in the next two years. Um, and then commercially, I would say 2020 and beyond. Taking a step back, um, EE has been very proactive in something called LTE Broadcast. Um, you're one of a few operators around the world that have certainly been testing the, the technology. Yeah. But can you give us an update on when, if at all, we're likely to see commercial services? Yeah, this, uh, I mean, the LTE Broadcast is amazing. I mean, it's all these four front runners of of, uh, of high-tech and, and uh, you know, video, basically. So we, we are we're doing these uh, tests, and actually it's great in the sport area. Sport and video, basically, you know. So we can see that coming in, in for example, in the emergency services done, you know, in a couple of years. I don't see that coming in this year or the next, but I would see, you know, commercial opportunities and bundled in our offers in around the 2018 okay. sort of space. Okay, well, Fotis, it's been great talking with you. Hope yeah. you enjoy the event this week and Thank learn lots. <laughs> Thank you very much, Justin. Thanks for your time. Huh? Thanks. Cheers.